All right, folks, and welcome back to another episode of West of Loathing. Last left off, we had taken care of the El Roberto crest. So now, I think we found a pretty interesting tool in here. Let's see if we can find it. Mm, there it is. Key-shaped El Roberto device. Looks like both a key and a keyhole. I wonder what this thing can do. Let's head in here and grab ourselves a mule. Welcome to Alamo rent a mule. How can I help you? I'd like to rent a mule. Excuse me, but didn't you ride up here on a horse? Yes. So what do you need a mule for? In case you have a point. Remind us, remember us in the future if your horse breaks down, though. Alright, alright. Okay, so apparently we can't buy it yet. But, uh... We can go and take care of some quests before we get to that. So, we're looking for... a uh, fort down in this area. And then we also want to find... Um... So we want to stop by and pick up some stuff that we were forgetting over in Cavern Canyon, I believe. I don't, didn't see it in our backpack. So let's check that out and make sure that we finish up Cavern Canyon. Okay, so this is where we got the spider. Oh, am I going back in there? All the way this way. Kitchen. There's the bar. I think it's in here. Let's see. Place needs a new bartender. What's this? There it is. Okay. We got the jaw harp. Maybe they killed this guy for playing the jaw harp too much. Ooh. Alright. Empty bottles. Bottles left on the shelf here. And what's this? A monolith. Well, now. I get even more energized. <laughs> How many energizes do we have now? We have eight energize. Plus 16 to our 3M. This is good. Alright, so that was the main thing we are looking for here. And then now, if we go back to the Fort of Darkness... We should be able to find that person. Let's see. Already intense heat intensifies. Sweat stings my eyes and... While well, it's stinging, you fail to use them to notice that you're riding right into the middle of a herd of pyrobobes. Alright, let's ready our weapon. Ooh. That's, uh, that's a lot of them. Mysticality type, 92. What are we at right now? 85. So he will deal a pretty bit, large bit of damage. I would be surprised if they're not immune to hot. Deal a lot to this row, so take out these two and then maybe just leave those. Yeah, let's do that. But first, let's beef up. To 76 damage. That'll at least take care of that one, so. Better than just using a single one. And Doc. Use a shotgun. Oof. A lot of damage. 16 to me. Y'all strunk. Alright, let's see. So this guy's got 18. We just want to get rid of him. 42. Uh, bull Stomp will do 22, so that should take care of this one. And then one of those. So we'll Bull Stomp. There we go. Hey, they do take damage from fire. Weird. Alright. Seventeen there, bull stamp will do twenty-two, so we can take him out. Stack some more damage on the last guy. And then easily take out this guy. <laughs> Turn ninety-one. Wow. Are we responsible I put out all the fires and then crush the cow skulls responsible for them. Nice. Okay, let's go in here and see if we can find that person we were looking for before. They, oh, hello. This is from the key that we used. Let's see what we get. Key-shaped old vibrato device hums as we approach the floating window and peer through. See nothing but rocks in every direction. 
Every direction, except slightly down to the left, where you see two menacing looking hairy men fighting. Wait, they're not fighting? Taking turns bonking each other on the head with clubs, but they're smiling and giggling. Through the window, you can just barely reach the shoes of the one on the left. Yes! Grab the man's shoes, which makes him giggle even louder. As soon as the shoes pass through the window, it snaps to static. We've got some hide shoes here. See, you're... That's what you'd say to your friend if you were afraid of shoes and you heard some shoes coming. And even though you're not particularly afraid of shoes, this pair is still pretty intimidating. Hide shoes. Cool. Let's see if we can find nothing there. That's the dancing tent. There they are. Someone's rocking back and forth and making a <laughs> sound as she rapidly flaps her lips with her fingers. Er, hi, hi. <laughs> Hand her the jaw harp. What's this? It's kind of a musical instrument. You bite the narrow part and then, well, basically do what you've been doing. She gives it a few experimental twangs and boings and then knocks out a sweet riff. Wow. This thing is like a revelation. Thanks. I feel like I, maybe I should take this show on the road. You want to try the Jewel Saloon in Dirtwater? Sounds good to me. Thanks again. She leaves plucking the twanger the whole way. Nice. So that's how we get the jaw heart person for the band in Dirtwater. So now, we've already seen kind of what the key device can do. We found the shoes in the Fort of Darkness. Let's go around to some of these other places um, where the key can unlock some things. So let's check out next uh, the West Pole. Hey, we found a crate. Don't remember losing this crate, but it must be yours because it has mine stenciled on the side. And we got some more dynamite. Very nice. Back on the trail. What's this? Key-shaped elbow brother thing goes nuts when you get you this thing. Step through it. Camp Crystal Dream. Hmm. What's this? Oh boy. Conveyance has a side reading something on the back. Let's sort of look inside it. What do we got over here? Finally, something to recognize, though. You've never seen a sunk stagecoach before. Check inside. We got a really nice cowboy hat. Ew. What's this? Strange metal man. What is he holding? A glowing ring. Isn't so much a glowing ring as a ring made out of glow. It's almost insubstantial, but the energy contains is undeniably palpable. So don't try to deny it. We should go back and grab the stuff from that uh, vehicle before we continue on. Just in case. How strange, eh? Newfangled pistol, wow. I like this car. Nothing this way, literally nothing. It's kind of hard to describe. Well then. Process sarcophagus. The top has long since crumbled into dust. It's empty. No, wait. It isn't empty. There's a jawbone on a very small pillow. Let's inspect it. Been enough for a closer look and hear a faint whisper. Hmm? Beg your pardon? I'm sorry? Even closer. Hmm. Still can't hear it. Just pick it up. Seems kind of rude, but so is leaving it without hearing what it has to say. You pick it up and hold it to your ear. Oh, come on. Please speak up. Let's hold it even closer. Stick it in our ear. <laughs> Jim the job phone up in your ear as far as you can. <laughs> Stick the finger in your other ear. <laughs> Close your eyes and listen as hard as you can. And... Undying. What? Undying! Uh, okay. Put the jawbone back on the sarcophagus. And in doing so, notice something yellow hidden under the pillow. Grab it as a reward for patience. The smiling face button. Abstract face of a smiling face printed on some flexible yellow substance. Can't identify with a little clip to affix it to your shirt. Oh boy. What's the smiling face button? It's actually pretty good. What's the... Ooh, the armor, though. Armor's really important. Nah, not giving up armor for even a plus 15 3M, though. Mm. All right. Oh, what a strange place. And what a strange horse. All right, we back. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. All right. The next place we're going to check out is putting them way back when the Snake Spring. What do we have here? Another gateway. Key-shaped elver brought device hums as we approach the floating window and peer through. It opens onto the incredibly bright lit interior of a building. A sign on the far wall reads Snake Springs Plumbing Supply, established 1925, and a sign in a nearby bin says plungers, 45,000 me each. That's, that's exorbitant. They're not even special gold pl toilet plungers or anything like that, just regular plungers. Let's grab one. We got a plunger. Finally found the other kind of plunger. <laughs> Strange. All right. Got a toilet plunger in hand. Uh, knife still does pretty good damage. We can swap it out, but we need to reapply the silver plating and the sharpening and all that. I don't even know how you would sharpen a plunger, so. All right. Next. Let's go to the place where perhaps the cows hit hardest. Alexandria Ranch. If I can remember where it is. <laughs> there it is. If our bleeps leads to one of those Elva Broader robots, let's approach it. Oh, we have the option of leaving it alone. Let's leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, at this point, we need to be very careful about picking and choosing what we fight. This is the place that got absolutely destroyed. Ooh. Everything is gone. But what do we find here? He shopped Elver Broad device hums as we approach the floating window and peer through. We see a woman browsing through a book as she strolls along a garden path. There's a booming noise in the distance. She looks up. There's a burst of static and the scene repeats. Let's grab her arm and pull her through. Grab her arm and pull her through. What the what? Quit a rescue! What just happened? What did you do? Saved your life. Don't mention it all in today's work. Where is my house? As best as I can work out, the commander of a nearby army fort got cabin fever and went on a paranoid rampage. You just happen to be in range of their guns. So that's what that soldier was trying to warn me about. I assumed he meant goblins or something. I'm sorry. Well, but how am I alive? I just happened to see you through a time rift and pulled you through just before the explosion. Don't ask me to explain that. Okay. Also, it's pro you're probably a couple of years out of date. How long has it been for you since the cows came home? Since the what? Ooh boy, you have a lot of catching up to do. Well, I, I can't do it in this pile of rubble. What am I going to do? Oh, all my lovely books. Hmm, well, speaking of books, there's this town called Dirtwater. Sounds charming. Plenty of space there, and they could use a library or bookstore or something. Hmm, okay, I suppose it's better than living in a crater. Some of these volumes look salvageable. All right, I'll head there directly. We'll see you later. And we will indeed see you later. Okay, now that we have re rescued him, let's see what we have. Okay, I think the only thing left is the fort that we were looking for. So let's go there. Let's see if we can find this uh, fort. Mm. Another monolith. Powered on. More energized effects. That's good. That's the, that's the kind of random encounter we need. Let's wander around this area. There it is. Fort Unnecessary. Let's check it out. Okay. And we found something here. Key-shaped Elva Broad device hums would approach the floating window and peer through. In it, there's a busy street. Metal vehicles you can't identify move past. Every 15 seconds or so, a strange metal and glass rectangle falls past the window and you hear a man's voice shouting. Let's grab the rectangle next time it falls. We snatch it. And the view through the window is replaced with static. We got a strange glass rectangle. Wow, this is a nice rectangle. 
don't know what this little rectangle of glass and metal with blinking lights and strange sigils is, but you know having it makes you better than other people. See this, Doc? I just got the latest strange glass rectangle. Look at how fancy I am now, Doc. Hmm. <laughs> she seems unimpressed. Hired-looking woman in a military outfit darts in front of your door as you enter. Oh no, I can't be having any more m misfits. You can either swear to me that you're halfway competent, even a quarter competent, and that you'll help out, sort out this crew of no-hopers, or you can turn right back around and march double time. All right, I'll help. I'm in the business of helping people. All right, I'm going to hold you to that promise. Come on, in. I'm Captain Harriet Davenport. My name is Gus Gustavo. What's the problem, Cap? Problems, plural. Welcome to Camp Fubar, where all the army's idiots and rejects are sent, so they're out of the way. I have had it up to my eyeballs trying to run this place. Please help these morons figure out their malfunctions so they can muster out of here and leave me in peace. Can you give me some details? You can talk to them individually for more information, but the brief is we got a scout who's blind as a bat, a cook who can't figure out how to make corned beef hash on a toast, the guy who can't load and fire a cannon without blowing it up or maybe shooting backwards, a guy who somehow, and I can't for the life of me figure this out, is too bow-legged to ride a horse, and a kid who is sent here because he just can't figure out how to make tie a bow tie. Oh, and just to put the ice in the cake, we've got infinite goblins living in our storage shed. Wow. Okay, I begin to see the scope of your complaint. Pal, you are not just whistling Dixie. So what did you do get to get sent here? You can hear teeth grinding as she growls at you. Do not ask. Oh, okay, well, I'll just take a, take a look around then. <laughs> Hello, you. You the scout? Guy squints at you really hard. Howdy. Do I know your fuzzy silhouette doesn't seem familiar? Nope, I'm just passing through. What do you do here? Well, I'm supposed to be a scout, but I broke my only pair of glasses. Without them, can't see a dang thing. I could try to get you a new pair. I'd be much obliged. I hear there's a jeweler not too far off from here. I'd probably grab me a pair of lenses. Just tell them to make it as thick as they go. All right, let's find that jeweler's cabin. Get him a pair of glasses. Catch a glimpse of something carnival, colorful, mesmerized by a scintillating rainbow of shiny multicolored scales. A moment later, we realize we've fallen for the oldest trick in the book, specifically the book about how Frisco Vipers trap their play. Because you're surrounded by Frisco Vipers. Oh boy. Not Frisco Vipers. Wow, they actually are pretty high, high muscle. Uh. 81. Eek. They are muscle type. So they could potentially drop their muscle, and that might help. Now let's beef up. So means they're probably going to have pretty high base damage. 107, and I'm sitting at 97. Uh, and then I can do this to reduce them by 8. Yeah. I think that's the best bet. Let's see if we can do anything, Doc. <laughs> Frankly. Five. Oh, but the poison. The poison. Hmm. That's, uh... That's gonna be the real problem. Not their damage. Forty damage. Good grief. Oh, and then it'll stack again. Nope, nope, nope. We have to take him out this this round. Or do I have a poison cure? Well, even so, I did still apply it. Of our ropes. 30 damage to all enemies. Oh, you know what? I was thinking about something the other day, too. We can actually take some of this dynamite and turn it into old dynamite in the time squeezer. Might need to do that. Um, 
make it more efficient. Anyway, um, so yeah, can't deal hardly enough damage to any one of them. I've got enough for really just a couple more rounds of this. The poison, really, just one more round. Yeah, we either need to... I don't think even disabling is going to be enough. Okay. I do have enough to kind of heal myself up from that. couple more of those too. Alright, let's throw it. Get some of these guys down. Oof. I might end this with like a... A dock and take of a shotgun blast, so that's fine. Throw some more here. Basically get them down below, what, 13? 17. I guess I can always do a bull stomp too, which is 22 damage to all appointments. So if I can get them down there, that'll, that'll help. Just gonna run out of dynamite. Well, you know what? I can... Of that one. <sighs> so wasteful. Okay, so do that. We can at least survive one more round of this. Well, it'll be 80. It'll be 90 on that. Man! No, we can't even survive. Or it'll be way, way too close for that. Unless I heal, which I could heal. Uh, no, let's take this guy down. Should have stopped by and done some stuff with the time squeezer. We'll do that next. It's getting to be too dangerous to move around. So that, take off 22, and then, yeah. That doc will take out you. <sighs> Those frisky, Frisco Vipers. Frisco Viper skins adds plus three to all stats. Hmm. It's pretty cool. All stats, huh? Kinda wanna try that. We still haven't applied a skin to the hat, and do you know what? If there's any skin that we ought to apply to the hat, honestly, you ought to be the Frisco Viper skin. Put rainbow colored snakeskin on the hat and beam with pride. Very nice. Okay, that bumped up some of our stats for sure, which is good. Yep. Did? Wow, that's very nice. <laughs> jewelry shop in Zatsu. Says, kind of in the middle of nowhere for a jewelry shop. To be fair, pretty much everything here is out in the middle of nowhere. It is true. Oh, hello, old customer. Why, hello. Welcome to Master Gerald's Jewelry Shop. Howdy, are you Master Gerald? Oh, no. Master Gerald is back at the workbench. I'm just his assistant and translator. Goblin Jeweler Smith. You're betting britches, Sonny. And not forgetting it. 
He says that's right, the finest jewel in the territory. Well, what do you know? I don't see anything on display, though. Master Gerald only does bespoke work. If you bring in a sufficiently valuable gemstone, he'll craft him a fine ring for you for a fee. No trash rocks. I need a pair of eyeglasses for a nearly blind watchtower lookout. Can you guys make them for me? Clark translates the question to Master Gerald, who thinks about it and then nods. Having some old soda bottles for grinding down should work fine. He says yes. We have some glass of the finest optical quality. Is 500 meat acceptable? Sure. Clark invites you to have a seat in the living area while Master Gerald gets to work on cutting and grinding some glass into lenses and setting them in wireframes. Flip through a goblin magazine while you wait. The lead article seems to be about social interaction with humans and the value of occasionally pretending to be dumber than you actually are. Okay, close enough for government working. Master Gerald has completed the spectacles with the utmost degree of craftsmanship. Here you are. Again, the art item, very thick spectacles. All right. Very nice. So yeah, this jeweler can also do other stuff. Let's see, get those eyebrows done. Flush that toilet. Goblin's bed, maybe. All right. This one again? Welcome back. Have you brought any gemstone you'd like them to craft into rings for you? Have a look. So we do have a variety of different things, and if we want to come back and get any of those done, we can certainly uh, make them into a ring. But for now, uh, I think it's important to keep the the ring that we have on right now, which is the Elvabrado ring, which means that we get mostly only Elvabrado encounters. Because uh, in this area, those are kind of the only ones that you can handle. Okay, uh, before we forget, let's go to Curious Falls Mountain. Hi, Cobra. Another one of those freezing Cobras. You know what I think of your freezing Cobra? Two to five damage, okay, whatever. I can at least disable you. Punch. There we go. Got some more snake spleens. Let's go in here and beef up our dynamite a little bit. So here's the time squeezer we use for other things. And let's see, can we turn on the time squeezer? Let's see. Time squeezer terminal, increase time squeezer power. There we are. So uh, put something on the left. We can make things older. If we put in, oh yeah, we have the super dense coal, so we can put that through and get our massive diamond, which is awesome. That's fantastic. Um, we can also put in a stick of dynamite, and then we get old sticks of dynamite, which now deal 40 damage instead of 20. So I'm going to um, fast forward here a little bit, but I'm going to convert all of our dynamite into these old sticks of dynamite. All right, and there we are. So now if we look, we have uh, old sticks of dynamites and that's basically doubled all of our stuff. Again, wish I could have done that before, but hey. Um, so a few other things, let's see if we can upgrade. Okay, beef up is all the way up. Menacing Moo, we should probably level that guy all the way up as well. So now we can uh, disable all the enemies with the Menacing Moo. It's very important to get that all the way up. Um, that'll help with the larger groups of things. So now we have our eyeglasses. Let's head back to Fort Unnecessary. Right past a woman who's running along a desert trail on foot. Although running is a slow run with an odd lo loping gait. She's dressed oddly, no hat, just a thin strip of fabric tied across her forehead, light clothing, and a strange soft looking boot that can barely come up to her ankles. Or everything all right? You're running away from something? Something really slow, like maybe a desert tortoise, or... No, no, I'm jogging. What? Jogging. I invented it. It's like slow running. Uh, where I'm from, we just walk. It's better exercise if you go faster. But not fast enough to actually get away from anything, though? Full-out running wears you out. That isn't healthy. It's healthier than being eaten by a bear. I, 
look, I'm not being chased by bears. I've never been chased by a bear. I mean, that's obvious. You're alive and not a mangled lump. It's about physical fitness. Bears aren't an issue. All right. You're right. Thank you. There aren't many bears out here in the desert. <laughs> Pack of coyotes, though. You'd be in real trouble. This is a very frustrating conversation. They'd tear you to shreds even without those goofy-looking shoes. Hey, <laughs> I designed these myself. They're not goofy. I mean, they are, they are pretty goofy. Uh, I mean, what good are they if you can't even run properly in them? But if they don't prevent, and you certainly aren't going to protect your ankles from coyote bites. They're perfectly good for kicking you. Uh, this exercise has made you kind of belligerent. Get down off that horse. Uh, how about you can see if you can catch me? Right away, the jogger runs after you a bit, yelling, but as predicted, she cannot catch you. Gotta be the shoes. Yep. Gotta be the shoes. Alright. We met, can't see without my glasses. Yeah, I'm the one that went to find your new pair. Oh, alright, any luck with that? Yeah, try these on. Takes the glass to put them on. Well, I'll be. Never realized what a dump this place is. He climbs up to the top of the watchtower and peers out of the countryside. They work. I can see. Hooray. Good for you. Howdy, Cap. Howdy, Gustavo. Still got a lot of misfits here. Who's left? Private bow tie can't tie bow tie. Private cooker can't handle the rigors of putting corned beef on toast. Tillery still can't figure out how the cannonball goes in last. And private bow legs can't ride a horse. Alright, I'm on it. Nope. I'm on it. As soon as I can get past you. Or not. <laughs> okay, gotta go in the building. Alright, here we go. Hmm, desk. General, what's his name? Got a medal of adequacy. That ain't nice. <laughs> Howdy. What's, hi, what's wrong? You know, I had a pretty good job as the general's personal assistant, but I got fired and reassigned here. What happened? Everything was great at first. I'm pretty good at scheduling. I can even write shorthand. And I'm an A-plus boot polisher. But then the general went and decided he'd look more serious and sophisticated with a bow tie. He expected me to do the tying for him. No good? Nope. I can do a sheep shank and bowline and clover hitch. But for the life of me, I can't get a bow tie to look right. The general sent me out here to practice. If I wanted to practice on, said not to come back till I got it. Hmm, should we help him out? Teach him how to do it? Or, since the general sounds kind of obnoxious, let's give him a clip on. Yeah, bow ties are really hard to tie right. Whoever invented that was a jerk. Here, try this clip on instead. Tell the general it'll save precious minutes he can use for generally. Oh, neat, okay, thanks. Runs out of the building, waving the bow tie in the air. <laughs> Good luck. If you teach a man to tie a bow tie, then uh, he's going to end up having to tie a bow tie later. Oh, this is the cook. Do you want a little jig over there, cook? Howdy, private. Cooker. How appropriate. Well, it would be if I knew how to cook even lack a little bit. Seems to be the trouble. Well, we've only got two ingredients here, and I cannot for the life of me figure out how to combine them. What are the ingredients? Corned beef, hash, and toast. Corned beef, hash, and toast. Hmm. Let's see if I can help him with a metaphor. What if you thought of the toast as a shoe? He nods. And think of the corned beef as shinola. Of course, I just put the corned beef on the toast, just like shinola gets put on a shoe. I get it now. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. <laughs> All in a day's work. All right. Oh, this poor guy. His horse has four left legs. Um. Cool. How about you? Howdy, they call me Private Bullegs. I can see why, you seem uncomfortable. <laughs> you ain't kidding. Look at my legs, they're bent so far out I can hardly touch both knees at once. Walking hurts. Captain says it keeps you from riding a horse. Yep, they're too wide. Horse slips right out between them. Huh. I think I can ride a mule, though. Both of them being a tad lower to the ground. So we can either bend his legs back, <laughs> which basically breaks his legs or whatever. 
Um, or we can get him a mule. Let's get him a mule. There's a place up north rents him out, but I can't get out there myself. So I need someone to go up, set up a contract on my behalf, and have him send me one. All right, I'll check it out. So let's go up and get that guy his mule, shall we? Hey, Wandering Sally. Absolutely. Do you have any more dynamite? I kind of want dynamite. No more dynamite. Bummer. Uh, do we have a fungicide bomb? I think we're going to want one here in a moment. But I don't remember if we have one. Yeah. It's cheap enough. Might as well just buy one. Cool. And then... I if she could take any of our uh, unrefined meat nuggets or stuff. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Stock certificate. Just like that. Alright. Looks good to me. We'll see you around, Sally. Cow skull wreathed in its own personal blizzard of freezing wind and shards of ice swoops towards me. And as much as it's possible to ascribe it to an emotional state, you guess the emotion to be upset. A freezing bow vine of some sort. Oh, cryo bow. Ah ha ha. I get it. High mysticality, but uh, low knifeicality. Shadow the beast like a snow and hate filled pinata. That's right. Now we can rent a mule. Oh, it's not for me. I'm, I'm picking up this for someone else. Alright, that would be 1500 bean. Whoa, why is it so expensive? Lifetime contract. Rental business isn't what it used to be, so we've made changes to the business model. I suppose technically we should change the name to Alamo Buy a Mule, but we'd have to change our branding. And you really can't rebrand a mule. They're too wary after the first time. Fair enough. All right, we got the mule rental contract. Can you have the uh, mule delivered to Fort Unnecessary to the south? No problem. Thanks for choosing Alamo Rent a Mule, and please remember for us for all your future mule needs. All right. We shall return the mule. Big billboard, big cow. Mm-hmm. Muscle type. Still deal plenty of damage. Figuratively. Should have a different idiom. Now I can see why that might be confusing. That's some more infernal leather, too. Which is nice. We already have the best thing we need from it, though. Alright, just two left. I'll take care of them. Where's that private bullegs? There you are. Alright. Look my legs. I've been so far out. Yep. But a mule. Boom. Well, that's a whole load off my a load off my a whole assortment of my limbs. Thanks, friend. Takes the contract and slowly moseys out to wait for his mule. Uh, can't collect the money from him. What about this dude? <laughs> Howdy, what's the haps? It's supposed to be a cannoneer, but I'm terrible at loading cannons. They always explode, except not the way they're supposed to explode. Or they don't explode at all. <laughs> Only time I ever got one to fire right, the cannonball knocked my sergeant's hat off, and he was standing right behind me. I still can't figure out how that happened. So they assigned me to this loser squad, and can't report back for proper duty until I figure out how to load a cannon right. Remember that cannon loading for Idjits book that insulted our intelligence because it was so bad? Let's give them the book. Yeah, uh, maybe this will help. Huh, well, let's see. Flip through the pages. Oh, you take the stick back out before you put the cannonball in? Well, that certainly sounds easier. All right, let's let him figure out. Follows the directions in the books and successfully fires a cannonball over the wall of the fort. I did it. Wow, great. Thanks a lot. I'm going to get my new assignment right away. 
Cool. Good luck, man. Good luck. And there's goblins in here. Important gun storage, no goblins. Open the door and take a peek. Naturally, the shed is crammed full of goblins to the ceiling. They're barely recognizable as individual goblins. You try to talk to them, but they're just babbling insanely. All right, so there's more places where you could go and fight a bunch of goblins if you want to, but I'm going to leave them to their devices. Good job. That's everyone dealt with and out of here. And that means I'm finally out of this, too. If we ever cross paths again, I really do owe you one. Captain Fr Davenport frisbees her clipboard, snaps her salute, and marches out of the fort. All in a day's work. Woo! Well, Doc, we did it. We did it, we done did it. We helped all the people in Fort Unnecessary, and we saved some people using crazy time portal things. All right, let's head to Dirtwater and check out our new occupants. Go to the jewel salon. Now we should see. Hey, look at that. Nice. It's a full band. The band's all together. Nice. Good job. Let's go see who we got over here. Now, one thing I should mention at mention, um, there are for Alexandria books here. Um, depending on who is on either side of her, she will have different books. So, if you're trying to get a very specific book, you may want to look into that. Yeah. All right. Hello again. Thank you for talking about this place. The locals have been very welcoming. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, and I never thanked you properly for saving my life, so, uh, thank you. I really don't understand what happened. I don't think I could explain it if I tried. And you're welcome. Can I interest in your book? Let's take a look. Alright, so she has any books that you can go to, like, pick up if you're missing any. Um, we have pretty much everything that we need here. So. But, it is good to know that the other residents of Dirtwater will be able to start their own book collections. Not a lot available past this point. So that is everything everything available here in Dirtwater that you can get from all the quests. It is a real hopping little town. Absolutely. Well, um, hey, let's go back to our room in the, the jewel. I think that's it for this episode. Remember, when you're doing time travel... Be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching.